me especially extend a, a warm welcome to those participating at home. Today's Mass is for the eternal rest of Fabricio Torres. Together now, let us stand and pray. Rain down, rain your love on me, rain down, rain down, rain your love on me. Rain down, rain your love on me, rain down, rain down, rain your love on me. Let your love shine and show me the way. We are your children, O God. Rain down, rain your love on me. Rain down, rain down, rain your love on me. Rain down, rain your love on me. Rain down, rain down, rain your love on me. Let your love shine, a light on my way. Let your light shine and show me the way. We are your children, oh God. Rain down, rain your love on me. Rain down, rain down, rain your love on me. Rain down, rain your love on me. Rain down, rain down, rain your love on me. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. We keep this day in honor of Saints Cyprian and Cornelius. Uh, Cornelius from Rome, Cyprian from Carthage in North Africa. Martyrs during the uh, Decian persecution, middle of the third century. I'll tell you more about their lives. They are uh, uniters and healers uh, they sought to be for the church that was in difficult times. We call to mind our sin and ask the Lord to make us healers and uniters in our time. You were sent to heal the contrite heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You have come to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who gave Saints Cornelius and Cyprian to your people as diligent shepherds and valiant martyrs, grant that through their intercession we may be strengthened in faith and constancy and spend ourselves without reserve for the unity of the Church. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever. Amen. 
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, strive eagerly for the greatest spiritual gifts. But I shall show you a still more excellent way if I speak in human and angelic tongues, but do not have love, I am a resounding gong or a clashing cymbal. And if I have the gift of prophecy and comprehend all mysteries and all knowledge, if I have all faith so as to move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away everything I own, and if I hand my body over so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. It is not jealous. Love is not pompous. It is not inflated. It is not rude. It does not seek its own interest. It is not quick-tempered. It does not brood over injury. It does not rejoice over wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. If there are prophecies, they will be brought to nothing. If tongues, they will cease. If knowledge, it will be brought to nothing. For we know partially and we prophesy partially. But when the perfect comes, the partial will pass away. When I was a child, I used to talk as a child, think as a child, reason as a child. When I became a man, I put aside childish things. At present, we see indistinctly as in a mirror, but then face to face. At present, I know partially then I shall know fully as I am fully known. So faith, hope, love remain, these three, but the greatest of these is love. The word of the Lord.
from the chair, as the Pope does, or from the ambo, or as so many of our priests and deacons do out there. Cornelius and Cyprian. Uh, Cornelius was elected Pope in the year 251. And in those days, that was right during the middle of the Decian persecution, which is one of the most brutal persecutions in the church. Uh, to be elected Pope was a death sentence. They were going to find you and they were going to kill you. Uh, Cyprian was a bishop I mentioned in Carthage, which is North Africa. We tend to forget how vital the Church of North Africa was because now it's all Muslim. Uh, but in the early days of the Church, it was one of the most vibrant places of the faith, producing saints such as uh, Augustine, Monica, uh, Cyril of Alexandria, of the Martyrs Perpetua, Felicity, and so, so many others. Um, as I mentioned, Cyprian was a bishop uh, elected there, and the elected pope, uh, bishops and popes in those days, the people, as well as the, uh, the priests, the deacons, bishops. Um, Cyprian, I mentioned, was in uh, North Africa, but he performed his ministry because of the persecution, quietly, secretly behind closed doors. He did not make a very public figure. And for that he was criticized because many of his uh, flock were in fact uh, being persecuted and suffering martyrdom. Uh, that would have been uh, trouble enough 
to be dealing with persecution and martyrdom. But there was something even more insidious that the two of them dealt with, and which is why we celebrate them together. There was a priest in Rome whose name was Novation. And uh, Novation was teaching uh, about penance. The great problem that the church was facing that was tearing it apart in those days was what to do with the people who had left the faith by their apostasy, who under the threat of persecution gave up the faith and offered incense to the statue of the emperor, which was the requirement that was laid down in those days. Many of them regretted, of course, having done that and sheepishly found their way back to the assembly and begged forgiveness. Novation taught no, no forgiveness at all. The greatest sin, he said, was not uh, murder, was not adultery. The greatest sin, he said, was apostasy, and it could not, idolatry, it could not be forgiven. In fact, he had such a great following that after Cornelius' uh, election as Pope, he was elected an anti-Pope. They wanted, uh, so many of the Romans who were faithful wanted him to be their leader rather than Cornelius. Cornelius and Cyprian said no to that. Our God is merciful, they said. And they did say a, a strict penance must be imposed upon those who had left. Uh, a, a long period of uh, proving to the rest of the community and to themselves that they were indeed sorry for the sin and would never commit that sin again. If called upon to die for the faith they would. So here it is, this desire for mercy. And I think that's what most beautifully characterizes their life. We heard in the opening prayer this uh, fact that Cyprian and Cornelius desired unity in the church, desired us all to be united around that, uh, that one, many common thing, but that one common practice of mercy there is forgiveness, even for the greatest of sins. There must be forgiveness in the Lord. But Cornelius was uh, exiled. Um, he didn't suffer martyrdom in Rome. He was exiled. And uh, reports are that he died because the exile was so strenuous. Basically, he, he, uh, he died from exposure, from, from hunger, from, from just the trials of, of being uh, being uh, forgotten. Others say that he suffered martyrdom by the sword, as did Cyprian uh, around the year 253. Uh, when we remember these men and women, obviously at other times, but these men and their heroic virtues, we ask the Lord to install those, instill them rather, somewhat in our hearts as well. That we have a great longing for the unity of the church as we pray in the open prayer. We'll pray, I think, in the closing prayer as well, the post communion prayer. But also that we proclaim over and over again the tender mercy of our God, that no one is outside God's forgiveness. No one is outside his love, as we heard in St. Paul. And so together, we bring our prayers and our intentions before this loving and merciful God. For all members of the church, may the Lord increase in us the virtues of faith, hope, and charity. We pray. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For those who govern May the spirit of wisdom guide them in their service. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all families who are facing brokenness and discord, 
May the Lord strengthen them in their commitment to love one another through times of joy and challenge. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For our faith community, may the Lord continue to draw us into a greater communion with each other. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For our beloved dead, especially Fabrizio Perez, for whom this Mass is offered, and may Saints Cornelius and Cyprian and all the angels and saints and martyrs greet them when I, with our Lord at his coming, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us also lift to God the prayers and needs that are in our hearts and those intentions given to us by others. For all these needs, we pray. Lord, God our Father, we, we love you in all things and above all things, and reach the joy you prepare for us beyond our imagining. All this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. now, my brothers and my sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, we pray, O Lord, the offerings of your people in honor of the passion of your holy martyr, Saints Cornelius and Cyprian. And may the gifts that gave them courage under persecution 
Make us, too, steadfast in all trials. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For the blood of your blessed martyrs, Cyprian and Cornelius, poured out like Christ's to glorify your name, shows forth your marvelous works, by which in our weakness you perfect your power, and on the feeble bestow strength to bear your witness through Christ our Lord. And so, with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty without end, we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fountain. Make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Gregory John, our Bishop, his brother Bishop Sperner, and Joel, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them to the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 
I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you, amen. Never permit me to be separated from you, amen. Whoever believes in him shall 
Let us pray. Through these mysteries which we have received, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that by the example of the martyrs, Saints Cornelius and Cyprian, we may be strengthened with the fortitude of your spirit to bear witness to the truth of the gospel. Through Christ, our Lord. Amen. Uh, once again, a reminder that in the beginning of the Sunday, our evening mass in English here in the church will begin at 5 p.m. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord with your lives. Thanks, Thanks Steve. Steve. Once again, a, a reminder to please stay in your seats until guided out through your particular exit by a hospitality minister. Wonderful, so wonderful is your unfailing love. Your cross has spoken mercy over me. No eye has seen, no ear has heard, no heart can fully know. How glorious, how beautiful you are. Beautiful one, I love you. Beautiful one, I adore. Beautiful one, my So wonderful is your unfailing love. Your cross has spoken mercy over me. No eye has seen, no ear has heard, no heart can fully know how glorious, how beautiful you are. Beautiful one, I adore, beautiful one.